Hey, what is going on? And welcome to another episode of the Crossroads Connect podcast. And it is awesome uh, to be with you. I'm glad that you guys are here listening with us or watching on YouTube, whatever you are doing. It is good to be with you. We have a couple of awesome people in studio with us today. We have one of our residents here at Crossroads. Reagan is here. Hi, Reagan. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. And we also have with us the chaplain from the Colorado Rapids, Brad Kearney. Kenny. Ah, I knew I was going to. As soon as it went in my head, I thought, I'm going to mess this up. <laughs> Brad Kenny. That's right. And, and for the longest time, actually, we've been emailing, and I've been calling you, well, I've been calling you Brian, I think. Brian for, from time to that's time. That's right. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. It gets Do bad. you forgive me? Can you publicly you know, forgive me? Actually, a lot of people call me Rev because they can't remember my name anyway. <laughs> so they just <laughs> go, hey, Rev, what's up? So we'll just call you, we'll just call call you Rev. Rev. Got yeah. it. All right. So, Rev. Uh, I, I'm just curious, uh, not everybody is a chaplain of a sports team. And so I, I'm just curious how, what is kind of, what is your story? Uh, I know that you, you said that you, you grew up in the, in, in the Denver area. Uh, you grew up and man, how did you get to where you are? Yeah. Um, actually I'm a native of Colorado, but I grew up in Arizona, Michigan. Okay. Went to school in Chicago. So I've been around a lot and then came back, actually worked for the club as a PR guy. For a number of years and uh really it, it was during those years working as a public relations media relations guy that god kind of put a burden on my heart for just everyone i was working with the athletes the coaches the staff mm-hmm. and um sort of my my story as i as i call it i actually call it my saint martin moment but my saint martin moment i was walking out on the pitch with a player and he knew i was gonna get it, going to get married and so he says uh he says, what's up? Like, how's your fiance wedding plans? Yeah, yeah, things are going great. And he just asked me, he goes, well, are you guys living together? And I said, no. And he goes, why not? And I go, I, you know, as a Christian, I was a little mm-hmm. nervous. Like, do sure. I want to share right now? Do I, I kind of didn't. So I was like, uh, well, why? You know, he goes, aren't you scared? And I go, scared? Scared about what? Do you know something I don't, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought this guy, like, knew my wife or my fiance <laughs> for a minute. And mm-hmm. he goes, no, no, I don't I don't know her. I don't know her. I just, you know, scared. Like, you guys won't be a fit. You won't work out. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, in that moment, like, uh, I tell people, it's like the heavens parted and everything got quiet all around. It was just me and him. And I said, no, my faith tells me I don't have to be afraid. Mm. Yeah. And I was just a PR guy. I, I get back to my hotel room that night. And I just said, God, if I can have more conversations, more moments like that, um, that's what I want to do with my life. That's who I want to be. And, uh, as God would have it, um, not too long after that, uh, I, I left my job, uh, with the Rapids. I, um, applied for Denver seminary and my first day of seminary was nine 11. Oh man. So I, I get to convocation and the president at the time said all active duty and reservists need to report to their battalions. And a third of the student body stood up and left. And I was like, Lord, what, what have I gotten into? I'd been married for a month. So I was really like, Lord, what journey is this? You yeah. Have us on? Mm-hmm. Um, a few months later though, I saw this guy running through the seminary halls and he had all this team gear on. And I was like, what are you doing? Where'd you get that? Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's for staff. And he's like, Oh, I helped the chaplain out. And I was like, chaplain, Mm -hmm. what's this about? Ran into the head coach in a restaurant, uh, not too long after that said, Hey coach, how are things with the team? And we had a relationship from being the PR media side of things. And he goes, great. What are you doing now? And I said, Oh, I'm in seminary. And he goes, Oh, well maybe you can help our chaplain out. Mm -hmm. So I call this guy up. I find out um, he's a son of the Dallas Cowboys chaplain who's passed away since, but uh, athletes in action guy. And uh, he says, sure, I'd love to have you help. And we had a um, couple phone calls, a couple, couple talks. And um, then he called me a couple weeks right before the season started. And he goes, hey, Brad, uh, my wife and I, we've got a, a new baby girl coming. It's like, congratulations. He goes, yeah, we're, we just found out, though, she's going to, She's going to have some special needs. So we're going to move closer to, to home to have family support. Yeah. So he goes, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, good luck. What does yeah. that mean? And so uh, my first year of seminary, God kind of thrust me into this role of being chaplain for a team. And so he answered that prayer that I had prayed mm-hmm. in the hotel room um, not not too long wow. before that. Wow, that's awesome. Um, and so uh, so you're, you're there, you're doing stuff with with the with the rapids now 
But like you said, that uh, I, I know that that's a volunteer thing. And so, uh, do you do stuff with athletes in action too, or, or is that something separate? Or, or what else? What else is on your plate outside of, of being the Rapids chaplain? Yeah. So, um, in my first few years, I was a hospice chaplain. I worked for a large uh, church down in the South Metro area of Denver as a pastoral care pastor. So that was kind of my bread side. That's mm-hmm. kind of where I made the income, and I could do the Rapids chaplaincy in the volunteer role. Mm -hmm. But a few years ago, God just kind of said, step out in faith. And so all along, I'd had this organization and sort of a nonprofit. And uh, we rebranded in 2017 as Soccer Chaplains United. And so I raised my support through that. I raised our organizational finances through that. And God just laid on my heart this vision to place chaplains with other soccer teams, other soccer clubs. And so we started, we've got a chaplain down with the switchbacks in Colorado Springs, Um, And it's kind of grown. We have 17 chaplains today. We have some bilingual chaplains all spread throughout, like Major League Soccer, United Soccer Leagues, the National Women's Soccer League. We've got high school chaplains, college chaplains. And as God just opens opportunities, we're looking at youth clubs. And and I've just kind of said, God, this this vision is too big. Mm -hmm. But um, that's that's what I do when I'm not around the club, not around the team, is I'm working to develop, train other chaplains. Because I learned that the soccer culture, the, the soccer teams, everyone's so transient. And I would, I would feel this real um, remorse that, man, I didn't get enough time. I, I bet youth pastors feel this way in a lot of ways, right, right. at a church. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you, you just have these, these kids, mm-hmm. these people for, for four, three, four years of life, and then they move on. Yeah. And so... Um, have you seen Ted Lasso? Uh, I have. Yeah. Oh, it's oh kind of it's kind of like so that, right? Funny. Uh, well, yeah. because he 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 finally gets invested into the to the one guy, yeah. and then he gets sent over uh, to to his original team, yeah, right? His and loan his loan gets transferred right. out, and and yet it wasn't even him, right? And he's mm-hmm. he's been trying to build and love into this yeah. guy. He's like, dang it, I just connected I, with him. I so related with yeah. Ted Ted in that moment because it was like, ah, I just got his heart, mm-hmm. and I just had him in this place where he was ready to to really live into his potential. So yeah, feeling that. And so God just kind of said, Hey, just go find other use, like kind of multiply yourself in these other places. And so God's doing some amazing things. Is chaplaincy in, in, in soccer programs, not a normal thing. You know, I I would say in North America, it's um, familiar, Mm -hmm. but I would say that there, there's sort of a growing edge towards, um, you know, we're, we're cautious about religion and religious things, religious expression. And so, Mm -hmm. I think especially soccer being a global sport, very different from NFL and, and from some of the other North American sports that kind of originated here. Um, it's, it's much harder sometimes for chaplaincy and soccer to get going because you have European and South American influences in the game at management levels and, th- and they're not accustomed necessarily to chaplaincy sure. expressions. And so mm-hmm. that's some of the education work that, that I have to do from time to time, just working with different clubs to say, this is what a chaplain is. This is how we're different. Do you guys have chaplains overseas? Not yet. Not yet. But we were connected really strong and really tightly with chaplaincy organizations, especially in the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, my mentor, and this is, you know, we didn't get into this pre, pre-program, but uh, so I'm a Manchester United fan. Oh, okay. And the reason why I didn't okay. just... Well, like, it's been fun having yeah, you on the show, come Brad. On. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Jared. Um, but the reason why, and I tell people this, is my mentor was a longtime Manchester United uh, football club chaplain. Okay. And he invited me into his home, took me to a game. Uh, I watched Manchester United destroy Watford. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo was dancing on the sidelines with this ball. And so I, I just tell people, I go, hey, when your mentor is the Man U football chaplain, like you have to be a fan. That's fair. So, yeah. All right, we'll, we'll give it to you. <laughs> That's for you. Uh, so uh, the Rapids are getting ready to start a new season in April. Um, I know that, they, man, they've had some few rough years, uh, mm-hmm. you know, looking back, but um, you were mentioning that last year was a little bit better, and I just kind of wondered, what is your take for, for this new season? Are, are, are we, should we have high hopes? You have to have high hopes, yeah. right? I mean... <laughs> yeah, every year you have to have high hopes. Yeah, I, yeah. I would say that there's a couple things, and, and I tell people this all the time. I am not a coach. I'm not... Um, I, I have some friends that can watch the game, and they can yeah, instantly yeah. know what's going on. I can't do that even after 25 years of watching the game Uh like I know what formation teams start in but like yeah I I'm just not (laughs) good enough but I would say this one is um the Rapids are on the uptick we're on the upswing um how many years ago was it that they won the cup 2010 
So it's oh, been wow. 11 years. Last Man, year was our 10-year anniversary. That goes so fast. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing how fast it goes. 2016, we were right there. Um, we were ready to, to go to the cup final. Um, so we were, we were really close again. And then, um, you know, I think the other time, was it 1999? that we were in the U.S. Open Cup, and, and there was one other time we were in MLS Cup as well that we lost to D.C. United back when D.C. United was huge. Mm -hmm. um, so we've had, Rapids historically have had a few, a, a number of good, good seasons, but consistently we're just like fighting to get into the playoffs. So last year we got into the playoffs. Robin Fraser, former player, he's back as, as head coach, uh, and – He's, he's really guiding and leading with his vision, the team. I'm really excited for this year. The, the other thing that I think is going to be interesting for the Rapids, and if you're a Rapids fan, is that um, stability. We've, we've, we've only introduced like three new players this year. Uh, we've kept most of the roster. I think we let... Which let is nice for you guys. too, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just it, last year was hard, truthfully, because I didn't get a lot of face-to-face, in-person time with, uh, with guys, but... Uh, I kind of became the digital and virtual rev. And so, yeah, we, you know, a lot of us chaplains had to kind of pivot depending on where we were and what our team restrictions were. But I, th I think the Rapids are going to do well. They're going to be uh, sort of a surprise, I think, for some teams. And I think some teams are going to know, oh, this team's going to be a surprise, so let's scout them a little bit better this year. Um, but I'm excited to see what yeah. the, the guys do. You, do you get, do you, are you at most games then? Are you? Yeah, most, most home games I'm there. Um, sometimes I'll... Uh, for interested players, I'll offer a pregame prayer time. And then I'm really just working the entire game to show hospitality, mm -hmm. to kind of care for people's needs. You know, sometimes there's a security guard at the stadium who uh, just needs a little uplift or a prayer, or, or they just need a list, you know, someone to listen to yeah. them. So you're expanding outside of just the players oh, yeah. and, and the coaches. You're, yeah, and you're, that, you're on for everybody that's that around. That comes from 20 years of being around the club. You just... Um, and being on staff as well, you realize that so many needs are just outside that locker room. Yeah. Mm. And so, um, I, yeah, I get home from a game and I've watched maybe 12 minutes of the game mm. and I'm just exhausted because I've just tried to be with people and, yeah. and see where people are at and, yeah. and kind of love on them. That's good. And, uh, w so are you just, do you just make your way around the stadium? Are you in the clubhouse? Where, where are you hanging out? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm coming to the game, yeah. and where do I find Well, if you come to the game the and you text me, yes. I will, I'll come greet you. I'll oh, come okay. say, hey. Um, but usually I do a pregame uh, walk around the stadium where I just pray over the fans, over the game, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And invariably, someone grabs me. Someone sees mm -hmm. me, hey, Rev, or hey, Brad, um, I want to tell you about this. Mm -hmm. uh, my son's getting shipped out uh, next week, or uh, so. So a lot of different things happen, and and then sometimes I'll stand and watch a game with the academy coaches. Sometimes I'll watch it with uh, the scouting staff that are up up in the up in the box, mm -hmm. or the non-dressing players. I'll spend some time with them, just listening to them. It's been a hard week. They didn't get put into the team. Mm -hmm. Then I'm in with the families. We we actually. Uh, have a suite that we we segment off for the for the wives and the kids just to kind of contain them. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> going in there, I I bring uh, sometimes my daughters in to uh, help babysit because mm -hmm. it is like Chuck E. Cheese. It's absolute madness. Kids running around, popcorn spilled up in the air, and I can't be in there too long. Yeah, but, that's but fair. Just trying to it be. It sounds in there. like my house actually. Yeah. Well, <laughs> how many kids do you have? We have four. I have four too. So yeah. It's like that. It yeah. is like him. That's awesome. How how old are your kids? Uh, 17, 15, and twins that are 10. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. You're about, get ready. Your mind's going to be blown. I have a nine-year-old. Okay. A seven-year-old and twins that are about to be six. Wow. <laughs> wow. How did, how do we miss each other? I have no idea. We were actually talking because, uh, when I was working at a different church, Brad actually came and, uh, spoke at one of our services long, long time ago. I mean, yeah. I don't even know when, probably at least over 10 years ago, right? Yeah. And so it, that's really funny. Hey, I'm glad that we got to reconnect It must today. have been something in the water. Yes. Sure. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> yeah, or it was just a terrible experience, and you're like, I'm never talking to that guy ever again. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm excited for the rapid season and, and for things that are, that are coming up. I, I thought it would be fun. Do you have a favorite moment as a chaplain? I mean, you've been there for... 20 years now is there one moment that just really mm. pops out and I go, and goes man this was it was a great time mm. well certainly as a 
as a chaplain, sometimes I have to divorce myself from being a fan, right? Mm -hmm. You know, because you have to stand alongside people and they get cut or taken off the team and, and you're just, you're four people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, as a fan, my favorite chaplain moment was 2010 MLS championship. Uh, we had actually beaten San Jose cold night here in November. And um, I get invited to go with the club to Toronto for a week. And, and this was actually the year my twins were born. So I walk into the house that night and my wife could hear the smile on my face. And she goes, what? And I go, <laughs> yeah, they've asked me to go with them. She goes, you have to go. You yeah. have to do it. And I knew in that moment my wife was a saint. And, right. Uh, so we, <laughs> we don't even remember our first year of the twins being no. born. So. Oh, my goodness. That's the only thing I remember yeah. out of them. They, I think they were four months old when she said yes, which wow. it was amazing to me. But we, we go to Toronto. It's cold. Um, no, no fans of the Rapids are there. I mean, very few. There's some front office folks that have made the trip. And we win. And yeah. um, there was... I don't know if we have time, but th there were so many exciting stories of what happened that week mm -hmm. with the team and um, just just special moments that I think will will be in my heart for a long time. But as a chaplain, my favorite moments are really the moments when when I get a chance to serve and mm -hmm. just love people. Um, it's it's a chance when you're walking down a hospital corridor and late at night there's there's dad. He's a super elite athlete and he's powerless because his his daughter's like sick and you're just there and you're, you're grabbing him up and, and holding him, and, and he's mush and you're praying over him. Yeah. Um, there's been some really hard things that have happened to people that have been part of the rapids. And I just feel blessed to, to be God's ambassador, God's agent, God's representative in those moments to, to somehow just try and point them to him yeah. and, and mm -hmm. be the hands and feet of Jesus. That's, that's my favorite yeah. Those are my favorite moments. Yeah, I think it's really fun. Uh, I mean, being able to work with a sports or organization has got to be fun just in and of itself. Um, and obviously you had PR times and chaplain times and things along those lines. But uh, I just think uh, being able to, uh, you don't have like an oil field chaplain, right? You don't have, you know, chaplains in, in other places. I actually went on a ride along uh, with my friend right after college because he's he was a, a Wheat Ridge police officer. And I thought, man, every cop car needs a chaplain in the car yeah. with the cop yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm like, holy cow, how do you do this every single day? I cannot imagine. And they have their chaplains and things like that, 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 uh, and, and, and they, but man, I just can't, I would be overwhelmed in those areas. So I just think it's cool that you get to do what you get to do and, and that God has led you into that space. And, uh, uh, what about, uh, you Reagan, what was your favorite time as a, just kidding, you've never been a, a chaplain, <laughs> but, no. uh, sports history though. Do you have a, you were mentioning that you are a, an avid golfer? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, um, I played golf in college and, um, my life plan for so long was to become a professional golfer. Wow. Um, and it wasn't until I was in college that um, I had You a realized you couldn't afford it? <laughs> <laughs> couldn't afford it, didn't have the patience. Um, but I had a similar, a similar moment to you, Brad, where um, I had this awakening where I felt alive for the first mm. time. And I thought, I want to do that all the time, and which led me to seminary. Um, but yes, I, I played golf really competitively. So we're, if we're moving into our favorite yes. sports moments Favorite now. sports moment in history. Okay. So it's the 2012 Masters. Bubba Watson is on the um, tenth hole, I believe, and he. Um, Hold on, you're going too fast. This is a golf story. Oh, <laughs> let me lower my voice a few notches yeah, and <laughs> slow down. Um, this was so suspenseful. I remember where I, don't have I was. Have a bird button. I need a bird button. <laughs> I remember where I was, and so. Um, Bubba Watson fades this drive into the woods. And um, he gets up to his ball for a second shot, and he has a 10-foot window to get this ball out of the woods. So he hits this sharp um, hook, nine iron, gets it on the green within about six feet, I wow. think, and makes the putt. And he won the Masters that year. And so um, the company that was sponsoring him at the time, they made T-shirts of that shot. And so I had one. That's cool. I, my jaw dropped to the floor, and I just... Good old Bubba. Amazed. Yep. Bubba Watson. Yep. I, uh, when I was living in Ireland, I lived in Ireland for a couple of years and I don't know how, but the guy I was living with got tickets to the Ryder Cup 
Oh, and wow. so we actually got to go to the Ryder Cup in Ireland. And, That's uh, a huge deal. Yeah. You don't even appreciate it. I, I do <laughs> to a degree. I mean, I got to see Tiger uh, put two there balls into the lake. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, That's cool. Not everyone gets to see those experiences, right? Where, mm-hmm. Because, uh, I don't know. I think, I don't know if there's a lot, I don't know what was going on, but Tiger just did not play well right. uh, in, yep. in that. And so um, I do appreciate golf, all right? Okay. Thank I like golf. Hear. And I like, I like to, to take play. a nap to golf. Yes. Yeah. It's yes. Sunday afternoons. Yes, absolutely. Golf and even football. Like the, just, oh. it's something about the crowd noise that just yeah. puts you to. Christiana's, <laughs> my wife is Christiana, and the, it was one of the when the, it was in between the Super Bowl yep. uh, and the last playoff game, uh, and uh, there was no football on, and she's like, "Is there football today?" And I said, "No," and she said, "Oh man." I was hoping to take a nap, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that that was fun. Uh, I think one of my favorite uh, sports history is is just when the Broncos won the Super Bowl for the first time. Uh, I was a, always a big Ed McCaffrey fan, and um, being able to uh, watch all those guys be able to do what they did was just a, a really really cool thing. Do you have a favorite moment in sports history? You know, as a Colorado native, when John Elway took that ball against the Green Bay Packers and helicopter yes. for the first down. The helicopter. Oh my goodness. Like and and I was sitting with one of my buddies who avid Green Bay Packer fan and I just I lit him up. Yes. I was like finally our As time you should. has come. You know? As you should. I mean I was the kid who would I, I would stand in church on the many Broncos Super Bowls going, okay don't think about the Broncos, because if I do, God's going to judge me, and the Broncos are going to lose. And Aww. sure enough, I get out of church service, and they're uh-huh. losing to the 49ers, 55 right. or whatever. And- oh, man. I, I think that 49ers game was on my birthday, um, So uh, which my birthday is February 2nd. Uh, the next time the Super Bowl, the Broncos were in the Super Bowl on my birthday was when we got killed uh, with Peyton Manning and oh. the Seahawks. Oh. And so maybe... I'm just bad luck. Don't ever have the Super Bowl on my birthday. Um, oh. Avoid February 2nd, guys. That's <laughs> the best way to go. But, uh, well, I, I want to play a, a fun game with you guys. And, and this is, okay. uh, I have a list here. Uh, we have 15 Would You Rathers. Um, and so I'm just going to, we're just going to go through. Is this and, a speed thing? Do we have to be, like, am I competing against Reagan here? Uh, you know, it's not a speed thing. It's just a fun okay. thing. Okay. Yeah, I just want to know your answer. There, there's some weird ones in there. And I'm actually, I'm going to have... The computer's closer to Reagan. I'm just going to have you read them, Reagan, and we'll all give our answer. But yeah. you can't... It is a speed thing in the sense that I don't want you to overthink it. Oh, mm-hmm. I just okay. want to hear... I gotcha. what is your What is your gut reaction of, of, how, of what you would rather do? So, all right, Reagan, give okay. us number one. Okay, Brad, we'll start with you. Would you rather be the worst player on a team that always wins or the best player on a team that always loses? Oh, worst player. Yeah? On the team that always wins. Yeah. Yeah. I've been the best player on the team that always loses, and it's kind of terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's just frustrating. It is frustrating. Yeah. Although, if you don't get a chance to play, that could be frustrating. I don't know. Too. Who is the guy in the Super Bowl um, that has two Super Bowl rings now, but he's never actually played in the Super Bowl? I don't know, but he's got two rings. He does. I, I think that would be an okay deal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, yeah, it is. Be good. It's good. Okay what about thing. you, Reagan? Um, so I, in, in my sport days, um, so golf technically isn't known as a team sport, but when you play in high school and college, it absolutely is. And I was the one of the only female golfers at my high school that I played for, so I was the best player on a losing team constantly. But um, it worked to my advantage in a way um, that – Lots of other teams knew who I was, who I was, and so um, I would be at the state championships. I'd be at um, these tournament, these tours throughout the summer, and so um, I kind of had a popularity because I was the only one from my school. So wow. I might choose best player on a losing team. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I it helped my high school see the prominence of that I sport. I see. I get you. Yeah. I get you. Okay. Um, would you rather go water skiing or snow skiing? Mm, water skiing. Okay. Yeah. I, I lived a lot of years in Arizona. I actually am not a big cold person. Me I like either. to be warm. Yeah. See? Man. It's amazing. We're driving here. Twins. Yeah. yeah I, it's, it's uh, and I wouldn't go skiing either, or it would be wakeboarding okay. um, or snowboarding. But uh, definitely for me, it would be, I like, I hate swimming, but I love water sports. Okay. Um, so if I'm doing something behind a boat, um, count me in. And so, and, and I hate being cold. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's been so fun. bitter cold the past few days here, too. Mm. Um, I think I would choose water skiing as well. Um, I just picked up skiing again 
um, last year. I haven't been in years. <laughs> and oh my gosh, it makes me sore. Oh yeah. It takes. Killer. Okay. Would you rather be the funniest person alive or the smartest person alive? Funniest or smartest? Yeah. I, I wish I was funnier. <laughs> what I, am. I am I am actually dull and a bore, really. Like I'm I'm not funny at all. So I'd probably go for funniest person alive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I'd rather be funny than smart. As long as I'm not too stupid. Right. Right. I don't know. It's really fun making people laugh. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it doesn't say do you want to be the funniest person alive at the expense of being dumb. Right. Right. That's true. Right. So you could still be, Although you could be funniest, second smartest. Funniest person could be if it's slapstick and you're getting beat up all the time. That might That's right. no good. So That's no good. All right. Okay. Would you rather be able to fly or be invisible? Ooh. Yeah, fly. Yeah. I fly in my dreams, actually. Do you? Yeah, I just... Where do you go? Put my hands up. No, just whatever. I, Wherever the wind takes danger, you. Away from danger, you know, like... Yeah. I fly like Superman. I like it. Yeah. I've never flown in my dreams. I've fallen a lot in my dreams. Yes. I never, <laughs> never I've flew. Yeah. Uh, I think I'd rather fly too. Like, I hate driving. Like, driving is the worst. Okay. And so uh, road trips are no fun for me because I get, I just, I hate traveling to work. Right. Driving. Yeah. Now, so, you were saying fly is a superpower, right? Not as a, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. fly in a plane. No, right. No, yeah, right, fly. Right, yes, right. yes. Just making sure. Yeah. I think I'd choose invisible, like the um, invisibility cloak from Harry Potter. Yes. Like, that oh. was just mm -hmm. so cool. It's because you're so devious. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I you just need to You want to sneak around. Yeah, yeah, hear people's secrets and steal stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that'd be the cool. The inside to Reagan. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm in seminary. We've uh -huh. got stuff to work on. That's fair. Okay, uh, this one is really intriguing to me. Would you rather visit Narnia or the Shire? <sighs> <laughs> daggers. Daggers. Because I'm, I'm actually a... Oh, I love both these guys. <laughs> I've actually sat in the pub where Tolkien and Lewis... Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Had their Inklings group. Okay. Yeah, with, with my best mate over, over there and... At Oxford. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very cool. Yeah, the eagle and child. Um, yep. Man, I, I, uh, this is hard. <laughs> Can I say both? No, no. that's it's no. against. You have to pick one. <sighs> I, I just have to go with the Shire. I have All to right. go with the Shire because I, I feel like Tolkien. I like that set of of children's books, novels better than Narnia to to a certain extent. Sure. Mm. To um, me, it depends on what I mean when. When in the stories am I visiting? Cold. Cold Narnia. Cold Narnia. Then definitely not. Warm Shire. Yeah, definitely See, Warm that's, Shire. That's why yeah. I chose. But if I'm thinking yeah. like, you know, right after the, the king, the kings and the queens, you know, are are throned, you know, and, and things are going right. well, I think I'd like to, yeah. I, I would rather go to Narnia. Um, but if it's definitely Cold Narnia, I'm obviously at the Shire drinking yeah. tea. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I, I think I'm going to go Narnia all, okay. all the way there. Just... The chances of meeting Aslan are just That's true. too great. I, can't I would pass like that to meet up. Aslan. That would be fun. Yeah. Okay. And you can too. Yeah. Just pray. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's let's put you in a corner here. Would you rather play soccer or baseball? Oh. What corner is that? Soccer. <laughs> yeah. Soccer. Now if okay. you said soccer or disc golf, then Then it's a little bit more of a struggle. Yeah, yeah. I in my old age I play disc golf a lot. Yeah. That's, that's my favorite. In yeah. golf? What about you? It would be yeah. between. What, what's another sport you like? Volleyball. Okay, golf and volleyball. Which would you rather? Ooh. <sighs> Beach am or I court? Gonna be, am I going to be like a professional in this sport? No, you just get to play and have fun. Then golf. Yeah. Yeah, for sure, golf. How about yeah. you, Jared? Did you answer? Golf. Yeah. No, soccer over baseball for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I would rather play golf over volleyball, although I like volleyball. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, would you rather meet your favorite celebrity or be in a movie? Hmm. I've been in TV shows, so. Ooh, what TV wow. shows have you been in? Uh, they're old. No one, no one would ever know. But one, maybe one we have this, this connection. I might know. I might know. I forget the name of the show, but the guy would get the newspaper in the morning, and it would show all the different bad things that were going to happen in Chicago, and okay. he'd have to go try and fix them. Interesting. So. Um, were you an actor on this show? Were you like an extra? I was an extra. Okay. Yeah, I was a, actually, I was a stand-in for one episode because nice. our heights matched up. Then there was <laughs> a show, uh, I think ABC did it, called Cupid. Okay. And um, 
so Cupid had was relegated to Earth, and he had to put he had to like put fifty couples together, or however many episodes they were trying to do. He he had to put a couple together every episode, in order to get back to heaven. It was Jeremy P- Piven. Did I say his name right? Oh. Yes. See, you guys don't even know who these people are. Yes. Whatever you say, Brian. Yes. Kearney. Yeah. Yeah, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, probably meet the celebrity. Yeah. Which would be who? Oh. <laughs> How long is this podcast going to be? Uh, you, you know, I've just seen a, a couple of really good films lately, but um, uh, Mel Gibson played really well in uh, The Mad Men and The Professor. I really enjoyed mm-hmm. that film for some reason on Netflix. I haven't seen that. Mm-mm, yeah, it's either. great. You guys should check it out. The Mad Men and The Professor. The Professor and The Mad Men. So okay. it's, it's a storytelling of the first creation of the Oxford Dictionary. Okay. And they bring in this Scottish guy, Mel Gibson, and... He's not educated, not academic, but he knows so much. He's learned so much in terms of language that he is the guy to do it. And okay. people are resistant to him. They they kind of beat him down. And then this guy helps him out. And I forget the name of the actor, but he was brilliant too. Cool. We'll have to check that out. Yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. check it out. No, it's on Netflix. I can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I got I got the access. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's good. Um, quick question. Side note. How does one become an extra on a TV show? So right you, place, right time. No, no. You just you go to these casting companies. You put in your your photograph, your sort of dimensions, your bio, mm-hmm. and when they're shooting opportunities, they they call you up. So in was Chicago, that in, was that you were in Chicago? I was for in that? Chicago. Gotcha. Yeah, it happens much more frequently. There. I was gonna say I don't know how filming. many casting things are happening in Colorado. I would yeah, know it's either. it's kind of rare mm-hmm. that they do it in Colorado, mm-hmm. but they do. I mean, they do commercials out here and a lot of corporate stuff, especially with COVID. They've they've been doing a lot more video kind of stuff. So <laughs> yeah, if you want to, yeah. Interesting. All right, Reagan, one more. Okay. Um, would you rather have the ability to control the weather or the ability to talk to animals? Mm. That one's easy for me. Yeah. What, what would yours be? Oh, control the weather. I hate being cold. Mm. <laughs> it's a theme of today. If I could control the weather, I would never have to be cold. <laughs> and I don't care about talking to animals. So <laughs> <laughs> Reagan, what about you? Um, talk to animals, for sure. Yeah. I would love to be able to talk to my dog. Man, I have four girls, so they would love for me to know how to talk to animals wow. better. But I already talked to our animal that we have at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a mutt dog that I don't really like. Um, That's a good point. You can talk to animals. Yeah. You, they just can't talk to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's fair, but to understand what they're thinking. That's fair. Okay. You know. Yep, yep. I'll it's go good. With, I'll go with weather. Okay. Yeah. I'll go with the weather. You don't want to be cold either. No. And and if you can control the weather when you're going water skiing or wakeboarding, you can warm it up enough that the water yeah. gets a nice warm temperature. Can too. I control the smog? That's weather kind of, right? It's like That's pollution. man-made weather. <laughs> you might be able to help it. You could yeah. use the winds to bring the go. smog out mm, of Denver. There you yes. go. Yeah. Yeah. But this reminds yeah, me of Despicable Me, the second movie where he steals the moon. Oh, and he mm-hmm. doesn't realize the ramifications That's of true. altering the moon. Yeah. <laughs> so you think might... if we if we get rid of the smog, it's actually going to cause more <laughs> problems know. than good? It might be a it's going to burn the crops. That's right. Oh, Colorado man. Then, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, adversity, no matter where, what you do, no matter what your life uh, is, you face adversity, right? It's just part of living and being a human. And um, obviously with, with sports teams and being a chaplain, uh, your players uh, have faced adversity, you know, through the years. And so I'm just curious, um, as a sports chaplain, both uh, within the context of the Rapids, but just in life in general, uh, how do you, how do you encourage people who are facing adversity? Mm. Yeah, you know, it's, it's unique, because everyone comes from different backgrounds, they have some have no faith tradition. Mm -hmm. And so as a chaplain, you're being sensitive to where they're at. Mm -hmm but you're trying to encourage them along the way as well. So sometimes being um, a support to them, being available. I I remember one player I know a long time ago had an eight hour surgery on his knee Mm -hmm. and just sat with his his wife in the waiting room uh, while we waited to hear the results. You know, is this guy gonna have a career? Is he gonna be able to go on and play the game? Sometimes if people are a person of faith, it's reminding them uh, of resources that they have through their faith. It's maybe reminding them through scripture or, um, it's a phone call. Yeah. Um, 
I've had the privilege of marrying a few couples. So you're doing premarital counseling and right. just being able to share God's word and God's truth through that time uh, can be a helpful thing. Um, sometimes it's, it's getting in and getting dirty, getting your hands dirty and doing physical work. So many times, um, especially in the older parts uh, of, of longer time ago in the league, you know, uh, a player would get traded kind of mid-season, which is kind of unusual for most leagues around the world. And the wife is left back in the city, like with the kids, the house, move it all. And the league's gotten better about helping with some of those things. But, you know, I've loaded how many U-Haul trucks and mm -hmm. and help people just kind of pick up life. And so, you know, in those in those different and difficult moments as a chaplain, you're, you're having to have eyes to see what are they facing. Here's another one. The, the season's gotten bumped. So thankfully, the start of the season won't be on Easter weekend, which, which was going to happen. But, um, but guys are going to be away from home during Easter. They're going to, um, in fact, we've got an Ash Wednesday service that we've produced and we're putting out tomorrow, uh, on all our channels for soccer chaplains United. So it's realizing where people are at and the fact that they're going to miss community. Uh, they won't be able to be tied into a, a, a faith group, a church, um, they're going to miss out on genuine relationships because they're in this elite, at least at the elite levels, people always want something from them. So uh, trying to be that person that doesn't want anything from them is just there to support them, to love them, to, to care for them, and to sometimes speak truth into their life when, when they need to hear it. Um, those are some of the best ways to, that, that we've just had opportunities to help athletes yeah. and the coaches and staff through adversity. Absolutely. Uh, Reagan, you are... Uh, getting close to uh, doing some orals and things like that for, for school. Um, right. And so obviously you're facing some adver adversity uh, <laughs> preparing for that and stressed out about some of those things. And so um, is there uh, things that you do in your life or practices that you have that help you um, as you are engaging in these things? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm, I'm good at this. My natural reaction to adversity can be fairly negative. Mm -hmm. Like this shouldn't be happening to us, but I think... Um, the Apostle Paul tells us, teaches us a lot on adversity to, um, uh, or, and I'm thinking specifically of James is, um, mm. take, take joy in, um, adversity, knowing that it has a divine purpose. So, um, I don't come to that conclusion usually naturally. I, I call my parents, mm -hmm. <laughs> I say, this is happening. And they say, Reagan, um, God's never let you down. Mm -hmm. So, um, knowing that, how are you going to act now? And um, humans were incredibly forgetful. Oh, yeah. We're incredibly forgetful of, of God's sustenance of our lives, of his goodness. And um, so I pull my community in and I say, hey, remind me of mm. why I shouldn't freak mm -hmm. out right now yeah. and why I shouldn't have a bad attitude. Um, and I couldn't do that without them. Yeah, that's really good. We, uh, I do that with my wife a lot. We balance yeah. each other out. It seems like when one is freaking out, the other one's like, hey, chill out. What's yeah. wrong? Yeah. And then the next day we flip roles, you know. And so, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's good. Uh, well, guys, it's been so good just chatting and hanging out with you. Thank you so much for, yeah. for coming on the show, Rev. Uh, that's for fun. Me, you bet, man. I mean, Jared. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. It, never let it down. Oh, I, I messed man. up Reza's name when he was on the show oh, last you? time, too. Would yeah. You call him Rusty? Or? No, I called him Reza, but I actually, I didn't. I didn't even attempt his last name okay. um, because I knew that I was going to butcher it. But uh, no, it's so fun to have you guys on the show. And hey, we are on YouTube. We are on uh, Spotify and Apple iTunes. And man, check out, we're, we're just wrapping up our MVP series here at, at Crossroads. So feel free to jump on YouTube and you can watch those shows and catch up. But uh, we look forward to being back with you guys next time. Yeah.